So I apologize in advance to the people that have already uh, heard this talk. Um, some of you might have. It's um, a bit about uh, a work that uh, is a bit about a year old now. It's uh, two works with uh, Carlo that uh, is a motivation for a number of projects we're doing now, which I didn't have the time to prepare something to talk about. Um, so it's about, um, it's inspired by the gravity emitted entanglement growth uh, ideas and uh, proposals to do the first experiment to test for the quantumness of uh, the gravitational field. And I will try to explain why we think that uh, this makes the point that uh, uh, the Planck mass may be the key to um, understanding quantum gravity phenomenology in a new physical regime, which is the low energy um, for matter, so a non-relativistic matter, and the weak gravitational field, which is uh, where many of uh, uh, the talks we will see uh, is a regime that concerns, uh, for instance, quantum clocks and uh, the gravitational quantum switch and several ideas that will be discussed during this workshop. So let me, for those that don't know uh, what this is about, um, these uh, were two works that came out simultaneously uh, by the group of uh, Sugado Bowes and by Vlad Kovergal and uh, Chiara Marletto. Uh, both uh, argued for the same thing, that if we observe entanglement growth between um, quantum matter, and this entanglement growth is due to uh, the gravitational interaction alone, so we excluded the electromagnetic interaction, then we will be compelled to conclude that um, uh, the gravitational field obeys quantum mechanics. Well, that is non-classical, to be precise. So this is striking because this is as a claim. Um, it, because it will be the first empirical evidence that uh, quantum gravity exists, and it's something that you could do uh, in a lab. It's a tabletop experiment. So it raises a question, why could we say anything about the quantum properties of gravity in such, etc. Um, sorry. Okay, so the experiment is the following. That's one version of it. That's a version in uh, the Bose paper. Uh, there are two masses that will be each set in a path superposition. Uh, each mass has a spin embedded in it. In it, so imagine this as uh, two small diamonds with a spin, degree of freedom embedded in it. A magnetic field is going to make it split going into parts per position, each of the masses. So you have the up or the plus uh, and minus, and the plus and minus for each mass. This gives you four different distances between uh, the different branches. By branch, I mean the plus plus or the plus minus, the minus minus or the minus plus. And in the branch of the closest approach, that will be the minus plus, um, there is, uh, gravity is much more significant and it develops an internal phase which makes the states to be entangled given that you started by a product state, two of the states, or A and B. So imagine this as falling uh, freely. There is uh, a split and then there is a free fall phase during this laboratory time T. And here the state is unentangled, then it becomes entangled. That's the prediction. Uh, then you do measurements on the speeds, and either by uh, an entanglement witness or by violating the bandwidth quality, or just by doing state tomography, you can see whether entanglement was produced. And this cannot happen with a statistical mixture of a gravitational field. You need a quantum. Particular, as we will see here, you need a superposition <coughs> of, uh, uh, of macroscopic metrics. Um, so this is how it was treated in these papers. They said that, that well, this is free evolution. It's going to pick up a phase, which is going to be energy times time over h bar. What energy? The gravitational potential energy, which is this formula, which we remember from high school even. And uh, then you just replace here, you get this phase. And they were saying, ah, we can imagine an experiment in the medium term in 15 years uh, where we can choose masses, time, and distance. So it'll be the time, the distance, and the mass of the particles such that we can actually do this in the lab. 
Um, so things were interpreted a bit differently than how I will present it here in the original papers. Uh, a very straightforward way to think of what's happening is to say that here time is going up. So this is preparation, this is final. Um, so you start with an unentangled state of the two particles, and I'm only talking about the spin degrees of freedom here. You don't need to consider the, uh, all the other degrees of freedom for matter. Uh, but you remember to put in the gravitational field also as a system. And then, uh, since the, the distance is different between the, for the plus plus branch and the minus plus branch, for instance, if what you're doing is linearized quantum gravity, if that's the correct limit in this uh, regime, then there's going to be a different metric being sourced by masses being at different distance, because having a distance of one meter or two meters between two masses is not a diffeomorphical equivalent metric. So in four of them. That's been the superposition of metrics. And this is essentially the superposition of space times. Um, one of these metrics uh, is um, in one of these, in each of these metrics, time is going differently on each mass. There is a different proper time dilation. In particular, to make things simple, you can just neglect the time dilation in all branches except the one of the closest approach. Uh, and you see that there will be a phase that will be created. And if this uh, um, phase is uh, pi and you get a minus here, then this is a maximal entangled state while you started from a state without entanglement. That was a product state. Um, so the only thing we're adding here from the original papers is uh, assuming uh, that uh, uh, there is an identification of uh, of uh, gravity with space-time geometry. We're just putting a very basic ingredient of GR. And uh, assuming that uh, whatever quantum theory you're going to have, it's going to have some classical state and superpositions of this. So it's very minimal ingredients. Uh, the question that arises then is, uh, OK, the interpretation looks good, but now we cannot think anymore in terms of this laboratory time and the Newtonian forces since we're doing GR. You have to find the geometrical invariant that's being set into superposition. And what would that be? Well, I've already given you the answer. It's going to be the proper time. Clocks are going to be running in a superposition of rates. Um, what I mean by that is that imagine just the plus branch for the right mass. Uh, it's it's uh, feeling the left mass being at two different locations. So if you imagine a clock here, it's actually going to be going at the position of rates, because it's feeling two different gravitational fields, let's say, intuitive. Um, OK, so how do you estimate this effect? Well, you write down a metric in the, uh, the weak field uh, form of the metric. And um, you see that. Uh, when the particles are at a distance d with respect to being far away that I can neglect this term, with respect to Minkowski that is, um, you can expand the metric in this way. You do an integral to calculate the proper time, and you see that you have a correction which depends on d. Um, and the way I'm writing this is uh, instead of writing the mass, I write the spatial radius. So here you see how striking it is that they can actually do this thing in the lab in the medium term because this is a spatial radius of something like a diamond, of which is a micrometer. So this is going to be actually below Planck length, the actual number, uh, divided by a distance which is going to be at the 100, um, so which is at the microns. So this is a hugely minuscule number. But this is exactly the proper time dilation that they will be picking up if you believe GR and the linear as quantum gravity, which is not a lot to believe. Uh, in particular, so we're not yet at the invariant. This is, uh, again, a coordinate distance. Um, the proper time dilation, you get it just by multiplying by the laboratory time. And you get um, this expression here, which multiplied by mc squared. So again, it's the same logic as before. You, need, you have a, a time and you need to multiply it by an energy, where in non-relativistic matter, you just put mc squared there, 
and you get back the formula that um, uh, you have in the Newtonian case. So everything works out. The difference being that now you have it in terms of uh, proper time dilation. And you can rewrite things in this uh, way just by rearranging constants. So the phase difference that is creating the entanglement is given by the mass divided by the Planck mass and the proper time difference between the branches divided by the Planck time. So now you see directly that, okay, it does make sense that they can do quantum gravity. They can say something about quantum gravity in this regime because uh, if you're using masses at the Planck mass, and if you are going for a maximal entangled state, then this is about unit, this is about unit, and this is, and then the proper time dilation is a water of Planck time. So actually, you are probing, in a sense, values of time close to the uh, Planck scale. Now, the question is, of course, whether you are actually pro probing the Planck structure of space time, which is something I do not have the answer to right now. Uh, what is interesting to notice is that for the experimental values that they are already proposing that they uh, would be doing this decade, the experiment they would be doing, the proper time dilation is, is at 10 to the minus 38 seconds. You just plug in the numbers in this formula. This is what they're claiming to be feasible experimentally. This is about a million Planck times, and it's about 20 orders of magnitude above what you can measure directly with atomic clocks. So this is not a clock. It's not you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot make a clock with it. What you're doing is with statistics by doing repeated measurements of the same thing, probing, um, indirectly measuring proper time differences, which are at vastly smaller than what you can access directly. And this is interference that is um, amplifying very small effects. So this is what they they are claiming they're gonna pick up. They're gonna, if you believe in GR, the linear quantum gravity, they are claiming they're gonna pick up an effect that is caused by a proper time dilation of 10 to the minus 38 seconds. Okay, so this was uh, an idea was just so here we're just making the point that uh, uh, if you're working with Planck masses to do or close to the Planck mass. Yeah, one fifth of the Planck mass to do this experiment, and there is time discreteness, which is something we simply assume here that uh, uh, this proper time dilation is uh, in the natural numbers. Then, in principle, it's observable, and we just gave an example that the entanglement entropy, which is an observable, uh, would become discrete. You would see quantum levels, and maybe quantum levels in the entanglement entropy of this. Um, so, in summary, it is striking for me still, uh, after digesting all these works, that we can, it seems that, I think many people in this room believe that we're going to see this effect. Uh, it's very plausible, and it's striking to me that we can actually achieve superposition of geometries in the lab and have observable effects. Um, We can probe time magnitudes at the order of Planck time plausibly in the next decade or so, which is very interesting. Um, we're speculating, of course, whether uh, we could actually be doing the non perturbative quantum gravity experiments um, in this regime of non relativistic matter in weak gravitational field. It's a very exciting prospect, it's very speculative, because um, one thing is to say that the gravitational field is quantum, which is linear as quantum gravity, does not discriminate between any approach to quantum gravity um, that is, let's say, mainstream, like string theory and quantum gravity. Another thing is to see something like discreteness, which would be a feature that uh, is non-trivial to derive from either of these theories, and it would be non perturbative um, yeah, so there is this fascinating prospect, which I think is very relevant for the effort to bring together quantum information and quantum gravity, that where the place where these two disciplines might meet is exactly this regime, which is also new and unexplored and has to do with 
is also related with all the effort to uh, explore the boundary between the classical and the quantum, the transition between quantum and classical. Essentially, this is the regime where uh, this game is being played. It means laboratory experiments. Um, and i just give you some directions on what we're working on now. So one thing is um, we're doing a simulation of this effect with the lab of Fabio Sharino and the, uh, Andrea and Emanuele, somewhere over there, and Carlo, to study exactly what is the quantum feature of gravity that is being uh, witnessed here. We think it's a superposition principle for um, the metric. Um, there are, so if you're only looking for discreteness of time, as actually Pierre pointed out, you don't really need entanglement. So there are alternative ideas. We're trying to see how to do it with one mask in superposition. And there is a beautiful formula that um, uh, Andrea understood, which tells you how you go from treating them as uh, masses as a test particles to understanding how you make the same argument with uh, mass distributions on a Cauchy surface. Um, so these projects are well in development. This project we just started uh, with Carlo and Vladko and Chiara. And if anybody is interested, uh, I would love to discuss this, especially people that, that uh, are from the mass age group, that have some background in the quantum gravity, uh, whether we can understand uh, if loop quantum gravity does predict the quantum corrections or discreteness in particular at this regime. And in and precisely where is the Planck mass scale? We don't really know where is the Planck mass scale in loop on gravity. We know where is the um, Planck length, but the Planck mass, I'm not sure. Um, there are many other things that are happening. So the gravitational quantum suite we've been studying with Julio uh, that was proposed by Chaslav does deal with superposition of space times as was also appreciated by, appreciated by a recent paper by Chaslav on time reference frames and by, by Marco Ogrinovich. Um, a question that arises is what replaces uh, diffeomorphism invariance in this regime, so some sort of uh, symmetry or quantum diffeomorphism that uh, would be relevant for this physical regime. Um, so this is a question we are current, currently investigating. And I leave you just with this message that we might know in a decade that superposition of space times exist with empirically. This raises a host of interesting questions uh, that already arise uh, at the level of weak gravitational field and non-relativistic matter. Probably this is related with the Planck mass scale. So although I have a background personally in black holes and interested in cosmology, and there's of course also the field of high energy. That's not the only physical regimes where you might see um, interesting quantum gravity things happen. Thank you. So I find this very exciting <coughs> line of research. Um, and yet I have some kind of reservation with respect to interpretation in terms of time dilation in these experiments. And this reminds me of the old discussion between uh, Stephen Chu and, and on the other, one hand and Cohen Tanucci on the other hand on uh, atom interferometry where people uh, argued that they can measure quantum frequency. In both cases, they uh, what they people do is they express the uh, phase, which is the only observable, in terms of other quantities, either quantum frequency or um, plan plan, uh, time. This doesn't ma mean to me, necessarily, I'm undecided, that you really measure effect of time elevation or of uh, uh, quantum frequency. Um, the fact is that there is nothing really they are ticking unless you put the clocks, which you may mm -hmm. want to put, and then it's a little bit hard to explain. Mm -hmm. And in contrary, if it were something picking there, <coughs> either with quantum frequency or picking with some, in, in terms of time, you would not see interference. Because 
this degree of freedom will memorize the path. The ticking rate is different in different branches, as you said. And this will memorize the path, and therefore you will not see the interference. The whole thing is that you do see entanglement or interference. So there is nothing physically operationally ticking there. Therefore, I would take with some, yeah, I would be a little careful with interpretation this in general artistic terms. And it's not an accident, of course, that you can explain this experiment by having Newtonian uh, potential. This is just a particle in the gravi Newtonian gravitational potential, the, the phases that you have there. <coughs> Still, I think this is an important experiment. It's some kind of superposition in spirit of GR of the space time. But I don't know whether this is kind of superposition of Newtonian space time or really G GR. Yes. Uh, I don't know either um, the answer. So this is one reason I'm saying um, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying um, that we should first see if some quantum gravity theory does predict any a correction there. Maybe we're doing just metrology as you say. What I'm not sure is, uh, which I don't know is, so it's not physical, just this. It's not feasible, of course, experimentally. But let's say that we do put, <coughs> in principle, you take clocks and you do this experiment. You don't expect to see a tanglement? I, I, that would be very interesting for me. That will be a witness that you have quantum superposition of uh, general relativistic space time, not Newtonian. Yeah. And then you will have a decrease of entanglement in the end. To the extent you can read out the which path information from these clocks, you can actually play around with the complementarity. You can maybe then measure clocks in, in a basis that you delete information which path and you see interference path. But as, soon, as long as you don't have clocks um, and you see maximal interference, I would say this is the regime uh, which is in agreement with Newtonian. Uh, gravity, but still interesting because it's quantum superposition on Newtonian space time. So, I don't know how it goes. so you, you think, in this sense, it would be more sharp if we could do the gravitational yeah, and quantum switch? It would be switch. much harder than the, the one yeah, that you sure. proposed. Yeah, I agree. Because I think you get one over c squared correction for the, for example, for the clocks in the interferometer. Very common of that. Sure. Um, so, I guess you're right that this. Um, there's nothing ticking there. And uh, um, seeing the entanglement is not, uh, I think we're making a stronger point. Not only is not measuring the time, but if time hadn't measured, we wouldn't see entanglement. <laughs> because yeah. you would just dis disclaim interference. Uh, but this is really for me a weakness that's co something Correlated to, 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 to the clock outcome, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, that's fine. Um, it, it still remains the fact, in my opinion, that um, in the literature there are two, there are two pictures about what happened to uh, space-time and quantum quantum mechanics. One, which is minority view, but is still defended by a number of people, is that space-time is space-time, um, classical, and then there's quantum matter over it. And another one is that, uh, no, there is no Generically, let's say it's not even space time, they're quantum superposition of geometries. And uh, this is an experiment in which this two picture would give a different outcome. So it would uh, um, just consider all of these two possibilities, decide between these two possibilities. Um, so, in that sense, it's a uh, strong evidence for, is evidence for uh, quantization of space time. Um, the argument, well, yes, but I can view it in a Newtonian uh, perspective. That's not what I was supposed to think. I agree with you with the second one. They just say that this is superposition of flat space times. That's what I this experiment, which is still a superposition of non, like non-classical space time, because it's a superposition of flat space times. I don't know how to. But uh, you mean flat, flat and still quantum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Newtonian gravity is not flat space time. Yeah, so okay. I don't Good. think we. Newtonian gravity is not flat space time. Yes, but not time delayed. Right. I don't think we disagree, yeah.
Yeah, there's nothing that tells you that it's GR, except if you see, let's say, time discreteness, then how do you explain that at this regime you have a quantum gravity effect? You need to bring in the Planck mass that scale. That would be completely new would, effect. That, yeah. yeah. So the position of Newtonian potential, would you think? Yes. Right, but then, I mean, then we know the Newtonian potential. I mean, I think the paper we wrote is, if you believe in, general, in classical general relativity, so if you bring in the fact that there's no instantaneous action at a distance, and you see this experiment, then you're forced to say that space-time can be in a superposition of quantum geometry. Because of course you have to, to, to have something else that tell you that Newtonian uh, physics by itself is discarded, which we do have. So it's not by itself, it's, it's uh, the information from this experiment plus the information we have from generativist experiments that... Yes, and that's, I agree. It's, I would say it's a superposition of space times in which there is no time direction. That's, I don't know how to define that better than what I just said. So I agree with you, this would be a superposition of space times. But we know that in Newtonian superposition, in two different Newtonian space times, we know from other experiments, from classical experiments, that there is time dilation. So we have to bring it it's not that time dilation is something mysterious and strange. I think we know it exists in nature every time there's a Newtonian potential. But I would be open as much as I would put all my money as, as exactly to that what you are saying now. I would be open. I would be open. And so imagine you put clocks, clocks and suddenly it's, it's a new physics. So it disappeared. The right. So I mean, the world can be anything. Yeah. Uh, everything can be, it can also be. It can also be that something happened in Vienna, which is not true in Paris. It could be, with what we don't. <laughs> but given the physics we know, okay, even the physics we no, know, we are entering regime. That's what I want to say. You are entering regime that has not been proven yet, hmm. and now you are claiming that you are already in the regime that you wish to be, and you are not with this. Yeah, and I am not saying once regimes. you put the class, we need it in new regime. So it could be that something is happening in Vienna, but not in Paris. How do we know? We never tested. No, this is not the same because we think about invariance of the physical laws across the uh, uh, in time. But this is a new regime. This is really completely new regime. Right. You are putting now superposition space times. That's what I want. That, that's great. In each one of which we know what happened. From classical GR. This is a very dangerous now thing. <laughs> I mean, I know it's, it's not very dangerous. It's not very dangerous. I'm not saying that we know what happened. I'm saying that uh, if we this take is what like we know from GR... There is a black body radiation. We know the left part and right part of the spectrum. We haven't measured it in between, but we know what it is. So let's extrapolate it. I mean, I, I think it's a great work, but I wouldn't like to over-interpret at the moment. So let's witness first superposition of space-time somehow. That's let's do it that, and then we'll do yeah. with the clocks. Mm -hmm. And maybe you see even something of discreteness. Would you agree with that? They haven't any theory, proposal theory, that would tell us, that would be consistent with the fact that this experiment come out right and generativity is violated. We haven't any. I mean, of course, everything is possible a priori. Oh, no, I, I agree But what is the theory? No, I agree Well, we you. have but theories that predict this experiment are consistent with quantum mechanics, uh, with many. I just, I just want to taking this attitude too seriously because then I don't know the reason to do any experiment on this. Sorry? I would just take uh, take uh, with some cautious this attitude because if you push it too far, maybe there is no reason to perform any experiment. Oh, no, no, because, because, because we, we, have have we have theories <laughs> that say that the, this experiment was the amount wrong. Will not give this experiment. So this is. Quantum, this is semi classical gravity. The classical GR is a thing that I don't believe is true, that many people believe is true. So we have two theories in the literature, and this distinguish between these two. Now you say, yeah, but it could be a third one. Well, give me the third one, and then we discuss it. Well, no, no, I'm not following, because Pandora's model can be much easier with one particle to disprove than the mass. I mean, it has nothing to do with that. I just want to say that. 
I try to identify what you can really prove it is. <laughs> and I prove agree with you that, that among the alternative which are in the among the theoretical alternative which are in the literature, not among all possible worlds. Of course, among all possible worlds, you can never prove anything. Among the theoretical uh, proposals and ideas which are in the literature, some are, are, are still available and some becomes not available. Anymore. Of course, yep. then God could have done whatever He wants, and we don't know. Much easier experiment can disprove the one that you are talking about as an alternative, even Pandora's model. Yeah, it's a single particle experiment. You can put the nanomechanical offset and superposition. There's nothing to do with, by the way, n nothing to do with uh, entangling two uh, uh, massive particles, and nothing to do with the superposition of, in that sense, space times. No, I mean, so I think. Gravity gives the, gives yeah. the classical gravity, just the classical ice equation of the spatial value of the new. Yeah. It's, it's a possibility. I mean, nothing is complete. So I think you're going in different directions. So you're saying, you know, what quantum gravity theories are being tested, because this is a limit of them. I think what Chaslov is saying is I don't care about any of them. What new do I learn about reality by you can seeing this effect? Anything about anything from an experiment, unless you can take this. I mean, what we learn from having the Higgs mass measured there? Nothing at all, because there could be a totally different theory than the standard model, which happens to give the same effect. But what is this other theory? So then we say, this is evident for the standard model. Maybe, maybe, maybe wait, just one sentence. Uh, if I have a two alternative explanations, right? one which requires general relativity and one which doesn't require general relativity, both involve the superpositions of space-time, no, because the other one which doesn't require generativity doesn't is not consistent with other experiments we have, like the but we are the sun. energy which we cannot extrapolate so immediately. <laughs> That's why it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we will wrap it up and we'll continue the discussion.